Can you see those and can you hear me, Mel? I can see fine and I can hear you fine. Um, let's see. Our next speaker is James Sowers from University. Oops, sorry, just one second, please. Uh, yes. Our next speaker is James Sowers from University of Minnesota Duluth. He speaks on the crank of partitions. So, James, please go ahead. Mel, thanks very much, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to share this talk. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, let me begin by thanking my co-authors, Brian Hopkins, who I believe is here today, um, as well as Dennis Stanton and Ezai. Um, this has proven to be a very fruitful collaboration um, amongst the four of us, and I'm really, really grateful for this work that uh, I've been able to be part of. I'm going to talk about the work that appears in these three papers today. Um, the first is a paper in the monthly from uh, 2020 with Brian Hopkins, and the other two are papers that have appeared this year, one in the JCTA and the other in the Electronic Journal of Combinatorics uh, with Brian, myself, and Dennis Stanton, and then Brian, myself, and Ezai. So let me jump into the math here. Um, and, well, let me just share a few more thoughts. Um, the primary goal today is to connect this thing that is known as the MEX or the minimal excludent of a partition, which is literally just the smallest missing part of that partition and connect that to another partition statistic known as the crank of a partition. And I'll explain all of those in just a moment. And then I'm gonna share some other connections between this MEX and crank. Um, I'll note that uh, the first two papers utilized generating function manipulations to prove our results. And the third paper with Hopkins, uh, Sellers, and E, um, we proved uh, lots of things from a combinatorial perspective. And so I'll try to give a, a bit of a flavor about what this looked like, especially the generating function side um, in this talk. All right, so a little bit of background. Um, we begin in 1919 with a paper of Srinivasa Ramanujan, um, on congruences satisfied by the partition function P of N. And Ramanujan in that paper, which was published a year before his death, um, proved these three congruences, mod five, seven, and 11, for the unrestricted partition function P of N. And Ramanujan's proofs involve insightful generating function manipulations. Um, and um, really that paper led to, um, has led to a lot of work over the last century in enumerative combinatorics on congruences, uh, looking for higher moduli, looking for congruences for other partition functions and so on. So this has become a truly fruitful area of research. Probably about uh, within about 20 years to 25 years after Ramanujan's publication, a number of people began thinking about how to prove such congruences combinatorially. And the idea was, could one find a partition statistic that would put the partitions into packets or groupings whereby one would see the divisibility properties based on the size or the number of those packets? And one of the first attempts at doing so appeared in 1944 um, in a paper in Eureka written by Freeman Dyson. And it involved something that Dyson called the rank of a partition, which is simply defined as the largest part of the partition minus the number of parts of that partition. Here's an image of Freeman Dyson who just passed away a couple of years ago. Um, it turns out that Dyson's rank could handle the congruences of Ramanujan mod five and seven, but it actually fails to hold uh, or to prove the congruence mod 11. And what that meant was that something else was needed in order to attack the mod 11 congruence. And in the same paper, Dyson made a very bold conjecture. He claimed uh, that there must be another partition statistic out there, which he called the crank, which needed to exist and would prove Ramanujan's congruence mod 11 in the same manner that the rank provides a proof for the congruences mod five and seven. Dyson didn't claim he knew what it had to be, 
but he did in this paper show a number of properties that needed to be satisfied by this elusive crank um, in order to uh, prove uh, this congruence mod 11. Well, 44 years later, George Andrews and Frank Garvin published their work, which proved that such a crank statistic does exist. Uh, and in 88, in the bulletin of the AMS, um, uh, they defined the crank in the following way. So we're gonna let omega of lambda be the number of ones that appear as parts in the partition lambda. And we'll let mu of lambda be the number of parts of lambda greater than omega. So mu is the number of parts in the partition that are greater than the number of ones in the partition. And Anders and Garvin then uh, defined the crank as, um, it's equal to the largest part if there are no ones, and it's equal to this mu of lambda minus omega of lambda if there are ones. If there's at least one one in the partition, then the crank of that partition would be this difference. And so, for example, the crank of 65432 has to be six because there are no ones. So you simply use the largest part. The crank of 5331 is equal to two. Notice that there's one one and there are three parts that are larger than one, namely the five, the three, and the three. So you have three minus one, which is two. And the crank of four, four, three, two, one, one, one is equal to negative one. Notice that there are three ones and there are two parts that are greater than three, namely the four and the four. So you take two minus that three, and you get negative one. And the point of showing you this example is to highlight that the crank can actually be negative as well as positive. And of course it can also equal zero. So we'll come back to this crank or more precisely a generating function related to the crank um, in just a moment. Let me transition then to this other partition statistic uh, that we wanna talk about today, namely the MEX or minimal excludent of a partition. This concept is really easy to understand. Once you have a partition lambda, we're gonna define this minimal excludent or max of lambda to simply be the smallest part that's missing in the partition. So for example, the max of five, three, 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 one is going to be two. Notice you have a one, but you don't have a two. So the max is two. The max of six, five, four, three, two is one. <laughs> one is missing and that's the smallest thing missing that's possible here. So the max there is one. And the max of 4433221 is five. Notice you have some ones, you have some twos, you have some threes, you have some fours. So the smallest thing that's missing here is a five. All right, so for this talk, I'm gonna define a function O of N to be the number of partitions of N whose max is odd, O for odd. And I'm gonna define E of N to be the number of partitions of N whose max is even. Um, clearly then the P of N function, the function that counts all partitions of N must equal O of N plus E of N. Um, and now what I wanna do is look at two very important generating function results uh, in this work. And this comes from the first paper I mentioned with Brian Hopkins that appeared in the monthly. So Frank Garvin a number of years ago defined the function capital M of little m n to be the number of partitions of N with crank equal to exactly M. And he proved that this is the generating function for that capital M of MN. Notice that um, this object in front is actually just the generating function for P of N, um, where the denominator Q sub infinity is just the usual uh, Pockhammer symbol uh, there. And notice also this little M variable actually only appears one time. It's right here, there's an absolute value of M here. There are no other Ms on that right-hand side. That's important to notice. Uh, we'll need that in just a moment. Well, using this, I wanna obtain the generating function for the number of partitions of N whose crank is not negative. In other words, I wanna know what's the generating fun function look like if the crank is zero or greater. That means I'm gonna take another sum over here on the left. The sum uh, M goes from zero to infinity as well. And I'm gonna see what happens. 
This is my generating function now for non-negative crank. When I write that down, the sum over M can actually be pushed all the way in because the, remember there was only one M, that M was uh, in absolute values a moment ago, but here all of the M's are greater than or equal to zero. So I can drop the absolute values. That thing on the end is a geometric series. It can be canceled with the one minus Q to the N that's here. And then if you just push the index of summation down one, you end up with this thing that I'm now highlighting in red. That is the generating function for the number of partitions of N where the crank is non-negative, where the crank is at least zero. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind for just a moment. Um, this is the generating function for partitions with non-negative crank. And now what I wanna do is look at a generating function for O of N. Remember O of N is the number of partitions of N with odd max. All right. So this is the generating function. Now, for a moment, this may look very, very complicated. So let me just um, talk about it really, really briefly. Um, the numerator, q to the one plus two plus dot, dot, dot up to two n is guaranteeing that you have at least one one, at least one two, at least one three, up to at least one part of the form two n in your partition. And what we're gonna do is we're going to assume that the part that is missing, the smallest missing part is of the form two N plus one. Remember, we're looking for odd max partitions here. So in the denominator, I take the product of one minus Q to the J excluding J equals two N plus one. And that denominator now allows me to throw all the other parts in except for the two N plus one. So this really is, when I take the sum over all n greater than or equal to zero, this is the generating function for O of n. Now that numerator can easily be simplified because we can take the sum of the exponent there with no trouble. And now I'm going to insert the one minus Q to the two n plus one in both the numerator and denominator so that the denominator simply becomes the Pockhammer symbol we saw a moment ago. I'm gonna distribute this power of Q this is what I get. And if you stare at those two sums for just a moment, you realize that the exponents very much look the same. Namely, it's some number times the next number up divided by two. And in front of the two in term, there's a plus one. And in front of the two in plus one term, there's a minus one. And that means that this thing can be written like this as one sum. And I'll put that in red to try to remind you that this is exactly the thing we saw on the previous slide that was in red. And because I've now shown that these two generating functions are the same, it means that for all n, I know that the two functions in question must be the same. And that leads me to this theorem, that for n greater than or equal to zero, the number of partitions of n with non-negative crank must equal the number of partitions of n with max odd. It's a really cool result. Um, and again, uh, the proof I've shown you is just a generating function related proof. This theorem also appeared in a paper of George Andrews and David Newman in the Journal of Integer Sequences in 2020, the same year in which uh, Brian and I published our paper in the monthly. Now, let me just point out really quickly, you can say something now about even max partitions as well. So let's talk about that quickly. For n greater than one, it turns out that the number of partitions of n with positive crank, truly positive crank, um, will equal the number of partitions of n with even max. Well, and here's the proof. E of n is equal to P of n minus O of n. We saw this uh, earlier. And uh, that means that from the above theorem, we know that the E of n partitions must be um, uh, the ones counted by E of n. Um, uh, must equal the number of partitions with negative crank. We had non-negative crank a moment ago, now we have negative crank. Um, however, it's easy to show that when n is bigger than one, the number of partitions of n with crank m equals the number of partitions of n with crank negative m. And so if E of n is counting the number of partitions with negative crank, it means that E of n is also counting the number of partitions with positive crank. And so we have a really nice result for E of n. Let me just say quickly that if you think about it for a moment, then O of n minus E of n must then be counting crank equal to zero 
partitions, right? Crank zero partitions. And we'll see crank zero partitions a little bit later in this talk. All right, so let me transition for just a moment um, and talk to you about some additional results related to crank and max. First of all, Forbinius uh, in 1900, or around 1900, developed a two row notation for partitions, which we now call Forbinius symbol. Each row of this two row uh, 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 array consists of strictly decreasing non-negative integers. It's based on the Ferrer's graph of a partition. One of the benefits of the Forbinius symbol is that you, if you flip the two rows, you immediately have the conjugate of the original partition in question. In 2011, George Andrews uh, proved that the number of partitions of n whose Forbinius symbol has no zero in the top row must equal the number of partitions of n with odd max. Now, I need to be clear, in 2011, the phrase odd max didn't really exist yet. It's a very new phrase, um, but this is exactly what George had proven, um, just using different terminology. And thanks to the theorem that I proved to you a few minutes ago, uh, we then know that the number of partitions of n whose Frobenius symbol has no zero in the top row must also equal the number of partitions of n with non-negative crank. That's what we saw a moment ago. Non-negative crank and odd max are related to one another. Well, in our paper uh, with uh, Brian Hopkins and Dennis Stanton in the JCTA, we extended this theorem of George in two ways. The first is this, that the number of partitions of n with crank greater than or equal to j equals the number of partitions of n minus j whose Frobenius symbol has no j in its top row. And if you take j to equal zero, then you get exactly George's uh, result that I just referenced from 2011. So we were able to extend this now to any j greater than or equal to zero. It's a very natural extension of George's work. And secondly, uh, we proved in that same paper that the number of partitions of n with crank equal to zero, I referenced those a moment ago, this equals the number of partitions of n whose Frobenius symbol contains no zero minus the number of partitions of n minus one whose Frobenius symbol contains no zero. And in this theorem, I should point out, we mean that the Frobenius symbol contains no zero in either of the two rows. So it's a, a little bit different type of result but it links um, crank to these Frobenius symbols and the presence of zeros um, in, a, in a different way. Both of these theorems um, are proven with generating function manipulations, very, very straightforward stuff. So in this paper in the JCTA, we also decided to think about splitting the MEX statistic beyond just even and odd. Um, and in particular, we focused on the odd side and so let me point out what we did here. First of all, I've already talked to you about O of n, it's the number of partitions of n with odd max. We're gonna define O1 and O3 of n to be the number of partitions of n where the max is congruent to either one or three mod four. So obviously O of n is O1 of n plus O3 of n. And now we were able to prove the following result, which I find pretty surprising, namely, that O1 of n, the number of partitions of n whose max is one mod four is equal to O3 of n if n is odd, and it's equal to O3 of n plus Q of n when n is even, where Q of n is the number of partitions of n with distinct parts. So really cool result, an unexpected result. I've got to uh, give credit to Brian Hopkins here for um, seeing this result uh, a few years ago. Uh, computationally, uh, and in this paper uh, with Dennis Stanton, we were able to prove this. Um, and with this result, we were able to prove uh, a, um, a parity result, if you will, that George Andrews and David Newman uh, proved in 2019. So let me show you that quickly. Andrews and Newman proved that O of N is almost always even, and it's odd exactly when N is twice a pentagonal number. Well, we now have a proof of this, which is really cool. Namely, O of n, that's the function in question, is equal to the sum of these two, but O1 is equal to O3 when n is odd, and it's equal to O3 plus Q of n when n is even. Obviously, mod two, these terms are gonna go away. And now the presence of the distinct part partition function 
um, as well as Euler's pentagonal number theorem give you the result. So this is a proof of Anders and Newman's theorem um, on the parity of O of N, um, in essence, using this splitting of O of N across the, earth, um, across the uh, uh, congruence classes one mod four and three mod four. All right, so in the last couple minutes that I have remaining, I wanna transition to the third paper in question today, uh, written by Brian Hopkins, myself, and Ezai. Um, in this paper, uh, we proved a number of the results that appeared in the paper with Dennis Stanton, including the ones I've just mentioned to you a moment ago. Um, but we also proved other results primarily using a combinatorial approach. So let me just show you a couple of those really quickly. First of all, let me point out this theorem um, and let me highlight what's happening here. On the left-hand side, I'm taking the sum uh, over <laughs> cranks greater than or equal to J, where J is some fixed positive integer or non-negative integer. And remember, this is crank M partitions of N. So this is now giving me a generating function for all partitions of N where crank is greater than or equal to J. Notice on the right-hand side, we do not have an alternating sum. If you think about the red object that I showed you several minutes ago, it had a minus one to the L in it. Mm. Here we have something without that alternation taking place. And what it basically means is that it's very possible that one can count with this. And in fact, we can, and we did in the paper. And so we're able to get a really nice picture of what these partitions look like combinatorially. And then let me just mention one other um, uh, extension that um, Brian and Eza and I proved. Namely, we looked at um, partitions of N where the number of parts was either odd or even. Those are the superscripts O and E. And where the max was congruent to I mod J. And so now we're splitting by number of parts, um, odd or even. And we let Q to the O be um, partitions of N into an odd number of distinct parts, and Q to the E be the number of partitions of N into an even number of distinct parts. And we were able to prove um, these two results. So now we have refined, in essence, um, what I showed you earlier for O1 and O3. O1 would have basically just been M14 without the O uh, superscript. And by doing this, we were able to provide uh, an additional way to prove the Anders Newman result. And because of my time, I'm going to go ahead and not show it to you, but that's the proof. It's right there. Uh, it's very, very quick. Um, and it was a, a, a really gorgeous way to refine uh, the results on odd mechs in a very different direction. So let me close by telling you that in the last couple of years, there's been a ton of work on mechs and crank. Um, I won't claim that what I'm about to show you is exhaustive. However, beyond the papers I've already shared with you today, there's 12 more that I can easily show you. Uh, notice the dates of publication here. They're all very, uh, very recent, um, all dealing with something related to either crank or MEX or both. Um, again, all of these are from 2021. And here's a paper from 2020 that I published with Robson Da Silva as well as some more work in 21. And here's a paper that was posted on the archive back in March of this year. Um, there is a lot to do with Crank and Max. Um, and uh, I would encourage you, if you're interested, to check out some of the work that I've described for you today. And with that, I'll close to stay on time. Thanks very much. Thank you.